Right there. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Fishing on Northwest. Wayne and Tommy Donlin. I'm proud of all the fish. <laughs> what do you think, Tommy? Hello and welcome to Fish on Northwest. Wayne England, Tommy Don Lynn back. Thank you. Hey, buddy. I told you to take the week off last week. I know you did. You did. You're like, uh, I got yeah, it covered. I'm like, hey, man. Yeah, it's all good. you know, and traffic and weather and what have you. Speaking oh, yeah. of weather, nice that we're inside. Yeah, it is. I'm about done with this stuff. I'm looking man. forward to it tomorrow. It's going to uh, be a little nicer. Supposed to finally get a break, yep. start seeing some decent weather. I want to welcome everybody to the show here. Uh, so glad you could join us. If it's your first time, Jump on board, especially if you're watching this for the first time here on Root Sports. Take some time. Jump on over to our webpage, www.fishonnw.com. There you're going to find a lot of insightful information, a lot of our video content, and all our social media platforms, not to mention a couple coupon codes you need to take advantage of. Edge Rods, FHN20 at checkout. You're going to save 20% on all Edge Rods all the time. Not previously already attached to another reduced pricing or special. Then, of course, Phelps Game Calls, Fish Hunt NW10. All Phelps game calls 10% off throughout the rest of the season. Turkey turkey season right around the corner. Yes. Should be practicing on those gobblers and those scrapes. And, those and, and elk season's boxes. only five months away. And elk just season's only five months away. A friendly reminder. Um, we got tons of info to get to tonight, so we're just going to jump right to it. First and foremost, don't forget, it's almost, you, you got to renew your fishing license, Tommy. That, that's right. March 31st is almost here. It is. It is. And if you're going to plan on you know fishing on the first, Monday, April. You yep. got to go get a new license, so don't forget. Yeah, and uh, you know what? Check out the uh, the multiple packages. You are going to save some money. The Get Outdoor Package, Annual Fish Washington License, or the Annual Combination License. You will definitely save uh, a decent amount of money in those uh, collective packages versus spending the the year pick. You know, kind of choosing and picking as you go along. That's right, for sure. Yeah, and you know, so the other thing too is by close of business Sunday. Yeah. If you are going to put in for your multi-season tags for either deer or elk, you got to do it by Sunday at the end of the day. Yep, okay? March do 31st, not forget. right? Yep. Yep. And I'm watching Idaho closely, man. They're, they've got House Bill 587 oh, in committee. Yeah. They are looking at going to a draw system right. for all their non-resident tags. That would make it. And so I'm kind of saving my elk points on the multi-season on the side multi-season, yeah. if I don't get my Idaho tag. Yep. Make sure you put in for uh, your multi-season. You got till end of Sunday uh, to get that in. And then, you know, we sit back and wait for the draw. So That's right. stuff to look forward to. All right. Running down the show as we get into it for this evening here. Epic day of steelhead fishing up north. On the sock and Skagit, full recap and why this fishery is such a special place. Uh, part one of our recent trip out of Area 10, uh, Area 10 Blackmouth fishing with buddies Matt Messing and, of course, Scott Cole. Then we're going to bring you part two, Petersound Blackmouth, using all Brad's cup plugs and original skinnies that day, Tommy. You all understand why we did it and why we use them. Uh, then we're welcoming back to the show. It's been a bit. Uh, Bill Monroe Jr., Bill Monroe Outdoors. Here to talk Columbia Spring Chinook and how the season's been so far starting off. Part two with Bill, we're going to jump into more springers by the numbers, and it's still early. Will we see an extension? Also, Tommy, we'll need to take a break in that segment and draw our winners for the Springer trip to join us Monday, April 1st, uh, on the Columbia for some Spring Chinook fishing. Then we'll bring you part three of the Puget Sound Blackmouth, uh, why this fishery is so enjoyable, and I think you're going to see why. We'll close out the show with some performance numbers relative to black mouth and why we ended up where we did and why it's already closed. That's right. Pretty compelling uh, data to yeah. say the least. You yeah. and I were kind of going over it at the beginning of the, before we started the show. And uh, boy, we did pretty well as a recreational fleet. We did. It's out as there. good as a guest, man. We yeah. performed well. And I think we hit it just right there in uh, March. That That's March right. opener is very conducive to us getting the fish we wanted to target and staying off the sub Without hitting the sub For sure. So, yeah. all right, jump it out for a quick break. When we come back, a little steelhead discussion of our recent trip here the last couple of days and how we did up north on that catch and release opportunity after the break right here fish on northwest defiance marine is the one-stop shop for the pacific northwest angler 
Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you towards living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dreams through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here in studio, Dwayne England, Tommy Donlin. So I was able to escape away for a couple of days, head up north and jump in on some of that un amazing steelhead opportunity. Joined in with uh, Bill Herzog and and uh, for day one, um, our plans were to go up Sunday afternoon. And we kind of got an invite to go up there and meet with a buddy. And we left. I got up at 430 and headed up about time I hit Seattle. I got a phone call like, hey, man, I screwed up on my schedule. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So Bill and I were kind of like, well, I guess we bank fish today. No big deal. We're here. Let's go fishing. Right. I mean, so he guided up there for 11 years. He did. Did he put you guys on some hot spots? Yeah. So his old haunts, you know, we kind of went, went around. And let me tell you, those rivers are busy. There are tons of folks there. It was a Sunday. Okay. Beautiful day. It was like a 60-something degree day, full sun. And um, that area around there is just teeming with folks that want to catch and, and wrestle with these steelhead. On the bank, small rafts, boats, drift boats everywhere, parking lots plugged. It's wow. busy. And, um, but we hiked into a few places and, uh, sure enough, he, uh, he was my guide for the day. He guided me into a fish. Right on. Yeah. It was, uh, it was pretty legit. Um, we, uh, we walked into a spot and he said, Hey, did you, did you look up over on that upper slot over there? And I said, from where I was standing, if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. It was, it was, okay. like, it was quite a ways up there. Yeah. I was like, mm. no, he goes, walk up there and check it out. Like, okay. So I cross this little Creek, get up in there, stand up to this rock. I look up there. I'm like, Oh yeah throw my stick lid way up rivers because the water's just raging. It's Hold moving. Okay. Drops in this deep channel right near slot close to me inside the current. And that stick lead drops down in there. Right as the rod gets out in front of me, the rod just loads up and buries and <laughs> goes peeling down river. Now I'm chasing this fish and I got to cross that creek. Well, the rocks are extremely slick. No right. longer do I have felt boots. I got a rubber sole. Okay. Down goes Frazier. I oh, no. <laughs> posted my arm into the water, popped back up, didn't lose a fish, got around to the gravel bar, got that nice eight to pound, eight to 10 pound nice buck. Now, what did you get that fish on? Yeah, drift fish in the Oki Drifter, man. All right. The globalized okay. Oki Drifter. Uh, I've come to really. Uh, appreciate what Joe's put into the liquid fire color. Uh -huh. It's got a tremendous amount of UV. Okay. And uh, up there, big water. So I went in there with a game plan of a full roll of number fours, all leadered up and ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I fished exclusively size four, number four, because it's a great size uh, presentation. The water's gin clear, but it didn't matter. Big water, moving water, want a bigger profile. I'm, I'm drift fishing that Oki. I've painted it with that champagne toast uh, nail polish to give it that pearl mm -hmm. kind of cover on it. But that UV still pops through on that champagne uh, nail polish. It's pretty impressive. Perfect. And I threw that in that slot. And uh, sure enough, um, with, I mean, one cast, one fish, one fall, one fish, right? Right. And uh, on, that, uh, on that first day, so a successful day on the bank, I uh, got some great pictures of that fish. And, um, you know, the stick lead and drift fishing, it, it takes – Takes you back to the days where we drift fished all the time. It's all mm -hmm. we did. 
mm-hmm. left the bobbers at home, man, just, just dunking lead in the fast water, getting it down early um, to allow you to, you know, uh, efficiently fish the drift. Because if you're, if you're throwing bobbers out there on that faster water, it takes it's a while. Swept away. Yeah. Your presentation meanders on through by the time yeah. your lead's finally on bottom, you're more than halfway through the drift. Sure. You're not going to find sure. fish, right? Yeah, so. That makes sense. So you had a couple of pros with it. You said a Herzog, and you also had our buddy Mike Ainsworth with you as well, I believe, right? Day two, uh, we had planned to, to team up with Mike. That's kind of his old backyard from days back. He's still guiding up there some days, you know. Mm-hmm. And he said, hey, man, let's get on. Let's take advantage of this and get up here and fish and film. Now, the weather was kind of iffy. It's like it was supposed to really kind of rain pretty good that day. We had some some heavy showers and stuff, but all in all, had a great day. Floated with Mike about 12 miles or so. Captured a lot of it on video. I think next week I hope to get this out for the folks. But um, tied into some real nice fish. Uh, Herzog and I exclusively drift fished the entire day, mm-hmm. stick leads and oaky drifters. And, uh, he tossed a spoon from time to time, but I literally, I think I picked up the bobber rod a couple times in some slower water. I was bobber dog and a worm, uh, four inch profile for that real clear water, trying to see if anything would come after that. But there's a lot of people bobber dogging. So Bill and sure. I were like, there's a lot of boats racing down early too. Right. So we're slowing it down, batting cleanup taking our time, fishing the slots and the holes and the boulder gardens and everything thoroughly, Yeah, dropping that lead in there. And, you know, he makes a 10-inch stick lead. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yep. I'm running normally okay. the six-inch in some areas where the water's moving pretty fast, and you think there's no fish in there. Them big fish like the nose up in that that heavy water. Sure. And if you're going to get down on them, that 10-inch stick lead, it weighs 0. 0.6, which is okay. about 18 to 20 grams. Okay. And you can throw that thing way upriver in the shallow, fast water, yeah. and it's going to get pushed down by the time it sinks into that slot where those fish are going to be, your de- your presentation is down. You're filling that tick on the bottom and you're drift fishing. And, uh, you know, I coupled all that. I, I fished that silver whittle, uh, uh, 1143, 11 foot, four inch, mm-hmm. uh, six to 15 steelhead rod all day. Yeah. And, uh, that first fish I got was all of 18 pounds. That's awesome. I, was, I love to analyze the gear, by the way. So yeah. like you talking stick leads, I mean, I use pipe jigs for weights right? because yeah. they don't get stuck in the rock. Yeah, they don't get hung fishing up. And for, you mm-hmm. know, for halibut and link yep. Yep. Um, And I love analyzing that bead hook and the curvature of that bead hook from Gamakatsu. That's completely different. Uh, that thing is money. I have pinned five or six fish on it now. If I got a hook into them, they haven't come off. That's I had awesome. one fish that grabbed as I'm dropping in the slot. It grabbed. It took off on a rail, came out of the water. My presentation flew out of its mouth. Never, I don't consider that a successful hookup. Never got a right. hook into it. But for the fish that I have hooked, and I'm running a two odd, Tommy, okay, on that number, the number okay. four, Robilize Oki, a two odd bead hook because of the wide gap and how yeah. light it is. It doesn't weigh down your oh, presentation. It's super thin. But it's yep. strong. It it's is not brittle. Yep. And it penetrates really well with that slip coating. Yeah. And uh, I have literally pinned six good hot steelhead on that hook and landed every one. That's awesome. So that's pretty successful. But man, it was, uh, it was fantastic. Bill called me last night and says, Hey, we got to get back up. There. <laughs> so we're trying to plan a trip here. Me, yeah. uh, Jordan and Bill, hopefully we get back up there next week. Uh, you got about two weeks left to, to get in on that. And the weather looks like it's going to change and flip here. We could have some ideal conditions. So really a great time. Had a lot of fun up there. And thank you, uh, Mike Ainsworth for uh, taking time to get us out. All right. Going to jump out for a quick break. We come back. Parts one and two of our fishing from last week. Area 10 blackmouth, why we do it, you're going to find out. It's a heck of a lot of fun. Stick around through the break. Blackmouth fishing coming up after the break right here Fishing Northwest. The new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse chine and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied boats will have it for you. Contact Allied boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium is the largest local outfitter in the Northwest since 1975, providing thousands of people affordable outdoor gear. This summer, make your next outdoor adventure more affordable by shopping at our warehouse style pricing. We are a local Scotty dealer offering sales, service, and repair. Located in Fife and Seattle, come visit us today. The outdoors awaits you.
so there's just a ripping tide out. Hard to even control fast enough to get these things down, isn't it? Yeah, we're controlling about two knots. We still have 130 left on the line counter. let a fish go without hurting it. All right, well, there's one down, not a big one, but we're gonna go get the next one right now. Yep, fish on the rose. I like it. Yeah, it feels good. It sure wasn't doing much on the tank. I barely see the rod moving, but now it's surprising me. Although we got a pretty good current going here. I'm pulling this fish against a ripping current, so. They like to pretend they're big. So I'm running that Brad's cut plug, that original skinny. This is that mountain rose pattern. About 32 inches behind my flasher. It's got a lot of whip. Kind of feels like those fish were getting last week. But it might be surprising me, I just might be a wimp. Yeah, he's a dink. He's probably 20, maybe 22. He's a stubby. So, you get that release and, yep, there we go. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, she comes through. There you go. I'm running multiple beads on this thing. I even added extra, a little extra glow on the glow side. And then I split my beads here and rubber band it. You don't lose the rubber bands and, you know, this still slides up and down. Actually, when that fish came in, Matt, that lure was probably up there. Yeah, yeah so, the line wasn't holding it back. No, it works real well. All right, we are on the water once again. Out here in beautiful Puget Sound, it's March. You know what that means. It's black mouth season. So obviously I don't have a boat, but, but that's okay. We got friends with boats. Uh, Dwayne England. Fish on Northwest, Scott Call. You guys all recognize him. Partner and owner at Brad's Killer Fishing Gear. We got Rue with us today. We got the Rue. And uh, we're out here with Matt Messing, the Viking. Um, oh, yeah. He said, hey, let's get out there and uh, get after some blackmouth. The weather is phenomenal. A little breeze this morning. Current's ripping pretty good, Matt. We got a pretty big tide change this morning, don't we? So uh, we're dealing with the, with the current, but we've popped a couple small ones. Looking for those bigger fish. Gonna bring the day to you. Let's go. All right. Looks like Matt's hooked up. Yeah, it was. Here, Matt. We're already up top, way back there. Oh yeah. See it splashing around. Nice. You still running the netzel on that one, or did you change it out, Scott? That's the netzel. That's the netzel. Supercharged with some light. Oh yeah, you did. <laughs> this little fish is, this is brutal right is it now. getting you? <laughs> I think this is not a net job. You'll be okay. Oh, that is a decent one. 
No, I was gonna unhook it. Don't you want me to? You want that one? He's probably right at 22, 23. All right, we can do that. He's real close. He is hatchery. Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. oh. Oh, geez, come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. You haven't been here, but you know it. You've heard the sounds, smelt the air, and you've seen where your heart lands, if not yet. You haven't been here, but you've longed for a destination near or far, where time spent with loved ones and friends will go into the night and last in memories for a lifetime. You haven't been here, but you're on your way to a place not far. ExploreTheDowls.com New days, new beginnings, new friends, new loves, new dreams, new goals, new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. Now last one popped it out of the downrigger and didn't stick. This one definitely stuck. This one feels a little beefier. I like the, the twitch in that rod there. But... Yeah, it, does, it looks pretty good. Uh, I think if I would have had 10 people on the boat, I would have had 10 people yelling at me, fish, fish, fish. <laughs> it happens when you turn your back. And that's exactly, once again, yeah, it's a good thump. Yeah, I like it. That'll work. It's nice head thumping, a little shaking. Here we go. Yeah, another dink. We're going to pop that one off. Get on there. Well, it's another one on the uh, original skinny. I'm telling you, buddy, that mountain rose out here, either in the skinny or the cup plug, it's just money. It's got enough glow on the, huh? You know it's exciting if brew comes out of the cabin. Uh -huh. See what's happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's 165 again, Matt. You're right, I think it's probably the six fish on there. Probably. Yeah. Nah, maybe. Boy, it's gonna be right there if it is. Yeah, that's right. Right at that threshold. We shall see. Oh yeah. Shoot some wild fish. Fish, the hook in my finger. That is for sure. All righty. There you are, sir. Right on. That's a decent one, finally. First keeper black mouth of the day. Yeah, and that's the key keeper. Not huge, but it's keeper. Right oh, about nice. 22, man. There's a pile of these fish out here this size, it seems now. Matt could yeah. attest to this. I mean, it's been a couple weeks now into the into the opportunity here, four days a week. Um, 
A lot of fish that size right now. Seen some bait in the water, a lot of things we're feeding on. Yeah. It should, uh, should promote a healthy population. Yeah, How late is this season open, Matt? Open for black mouth April 15th. April 15th, yep. I tell you, 165 has been the number. Yeah. And, uh, I haven't had a reason to change it out. I almost was gonna change it out to Seahawk, but it's been working so good, Scott, I just decided to leave it on. They pull good, but they're not like screaming line off the reel, so. Uh-huh, another dinker, another dinker. So here's the new rigging technique. Check out, this is super easy, fast, effective. Nice thing about it is you don't need beads, you don't need tubing, bead stops, barber stops, any of that. So what you do is you take a number five open eye side wash. You can go bigger. This is a standard SCP, SCP watermelon. This will also work on a mini, even a KCP. But rig it just like that with a four bead chain. Run your rubber band up the line. You're gonna take the end of your line. You're gonna run it through the hook garage. Just like that. It's actually the line keeper. Then you're gonna run it up through the big hook garage in front. Like that. Rig it through the top. Now to this, I'm just gonna tie a, uh, a standard dual lock. Just like that, once I get it all rigged. But for now, what we do is we run this up here like this. We've got our bead chain. So we're gonna take our bead chain up about two beads right there. And then you just simply slide the rubber band over the top of the bait. And the nice thing about this setup so it's gonna look like that. The nice thing about this setup is number one, you're not gonna lose your rubber band because it's on the line, but as the fish bites, it's just gonna spin like this. Spin, 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 spin. And it's not gonna leverage the hooks out of the mouth. And then with that big side wash, you get a nice big hits hook set in the corner of the mouth. Another rigging, give it a shot, see what you think. Oh, we got a fish. All right, there's Matt on another one. And now that we're on the right side of the reel. <laughs> How's that feel? Oh, it feels like home. <laughs> feels heavenly. Hmm. That one pop it out of the clip or not? Uh, no, we went, we went to check it. Uh, I started bringing the downrigger and the lineup together. And uh, as soon as I hit up on the downrigger, it disconnected. So, oh, gotcha. Uh, we started fighting. Okay. And it, uh, it, it feels heavy. I haven't had any real big head shakes or any runs, but... It's not coming up very easy. Let's see what we got. Be prepared. These fish have been deceiving today. They have. A lot of very similar sized fish.
Allied, the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse china and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied Boats will have it for you. Contact Allied Boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Hey guys, I'm Big Mike. Come on down to the Edge Pro Shop and see me. We've got all the best brands under one roof. We've got Hawken, Procure, Short Bus, Pro Troll, Yakima Bait, Get Em Dry Jigs, Northwest Bait Scent, Daiwa Reels, North Fork Lures, North Wild, Brad's, Superfly, Rocky Mountain Tackle, and of course, the greatest rods ever built, Edge Rods. Welcome back here in studio, Dwayne England, Tommy Donlin, and enjoying that, uh, enjoying that blackmouth fishing. I love it, man. That weather doesn't get any better for blackmouth. It was amazing, and very little to no wind, so it was just you know a very right. enjoyable morning, and we were just constantly. I, we don't have enough time to put them all on the show. It's just right. ridiculous, and just so many of them in that twenty-one to twenty-two, just yep. right in there, and you're just unhooking and letting them go, and you know, and hoping for a bigger mm -hmm. fish. But we can see why that fishery's closed. Right. Lots of activity, lots yep. of fish. So. Let's switch gears. We're going to talk Chinook fishing, but we're going to talk a little spring Chinook fishing with none other than longtime good buddy uh, Bill Monroe Jr., Bill Monroe Outdoors, jumping on with us this evening. Although he's busy chasing Springers, Tommy, he's finding time to hang out. How you doing, bud? Hey, guys. Good evening. Nice to see you and appreciate you taking some time. Uh, so good. let's uh, let's back it up for a second. Spring Chinook this season. Uh, do you remember what the forecast was? And, and remind me again, how does that compare say with the 10 year average oh boy well that's kind of a tough one this year springer uh, forecast to the to the mouth overall is it's actually down um we are well below the five in the 10 year average actually for this this year's numbers um the good news here for the spring chinook for 2024 and i think i i I've been talking about it more and more as we go on here, and it's coming true yet again. <laughs> is run timing, and we're we're trending pretty late, and actually we're trending pretty late on multiple years now, enough to the point where we are pretty like we're looking at you know a spring chinook fishery on the Columbia River that that just doesn't have. Um, well, it's tough to say, but it, it doesn't have meaningful opportunity right. quite yet for the early part of the season. It, it's really hard when you have, you know, the forecast that's, you know, overall around that 150,000 number, which is really low. That's actually not ideal. Sure. That's, that's really low. But then it's hard to, uh, you know, have this early March and, and, and an er, uh, the first week of April. Well, with fisheries trending later and later, we're that's not it. sure why it's happening. You know, mm -hmm. the departments are working on it. I can't even, again, I can't even fathom the amount of work that they're doing when they had these fisheries that are trending like this. Their job is incrementally harder and mm -hmm. harder. And I, I talk about it. And yeah, they, there, there are some things we should fix, with, like sea lions. <laughs> oh yeah. But, don't when you start road, looking at like time. don't go yeah. down that road we'll never get, I don't get want to go the there. It's, it's such a mess right Let, yeah. let's talk like, a little when, bit Bill, when about, we got numbers um, it's tough let's talk yeah. about water conditions for a second here so you know we and, and i'm curious as to how these water conditions play into that whole run timing equation we really didn't get a lot of snow yeah. so we don't have this huge melt off yeah. what are you seeing yeah. in terms of temperature turbidity is it all falling in line so check this out. This year, okay, last year, I'll go back to 2023 for spring, um, early spring fishery. I mean, we started fishing in 39 degree water. Right. Last year. Yeah. That was not cool. And <laughs> smelt, there was more smelt than we ever knew what to do with last mm -hmm. year and probably not enough dipping sessions. But this year, we've got lower turbidity. Um, water is pretty clean overall when you look at the Willamette, and that's the, the Willamette Valley dumping into the Columbia. But 
water temperatures are uh, very high. They're, they're right around 47. Oh, okay. And nice. when you're looking at a herring fishery, which is what we're doing, flashers and herring for the spring, we are in prime condition territory mm. for uh, a flasher and herring uh, uh, opportunity. Now, there's not enough fish quite yet. Sure. That's the problem. Gotcha. The pilot run, the, the pilot run did come through. And if you don't not familiar with the pilot runs, we talk about like this wad of fish that poke their head into the Columbia and they go up and into the Willamette or into the Cowlitz or all the way up and cross Bonneville just to mess around. Mm. And those fish showed themselves last weekend. Mm. It was a pretty good little decent showing. People caught fish. Things were looking really good. And now we're in a lull. Yeah. There's mm. been, the catches are just tanked. Nothing's really happening. Even down low, below where I'm fishing, um, nothing's going on. Yeah, it's uh, been, uh, this is all of a sudden turn and it's pretty slow. Uh, last yes. look today, we got 46 fish over Bonneville Dam, so uh, hey, that's definitely not that's a stampede. Tell you what, we're gonna jump out for a quick break. <laughs> we got to talk a little bit about North of Falcon and a few uh, numbers yes. that you're throwing pulling together there. Yep. So don't go anywhere, jump out for a quick break. We'll be back more with Bill Moreau Jr. right here at Fish at Northwest. I make my living catching fish, not only as a tournament angler, but as a guide as well. Catching fish is important, and Gamagatsu hooks for me, you know, they kind of help take the luck out of fishing a little bit just because they're a high quality hook. Obviously have a really good reputation for being very strong and very sharp. Gamagatsu, I use their products every day in the boat and, you know, big part of my success. All Defiance boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why all boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. All Defiance boats come standard with large fish boxes that are fully insulated so that you can ice your fish properly all day. All Defiance boats are foam flotation filled and unsinkable for the ultimate in safety while fishing offshore. Before you buy any boat, stop by or call Defiance boats today to ensure you are getting the very best glass boat your money can buy. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company could build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. New days, new beginnings, new friends, new loves, new dreams, new goals, new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here in studio to Win England, Tommy Dolan. And yes, uh, remaining on the line here with us, uh, Bill Monroe Jr., Bill Monroe Outdoors. Got a few minutes, Bill. Let's uh, real quickly break down any standouts and things that get you excited about what's coming out of North of Falcon. Cool. Well, here's the big thing. Um, this is the one I'm most excited about. We are changing the way that Thule, the Thule Matrix is now looked at differently. Um, NOAA and NIMPS Fishery, National Marine Fisheries, Right. Services, that's the feds, we call them. Um, they changed the way that we're allowed to look at lower river Thule um, matrix numbers. And that's the, the overall percentages and ERs that we get to hit in order to uh, predict Thule's. And it's actually a really good thing. It's going to help in the future. We've got a really good outlook for this year. Um, potential is there on North of Falcon to have no hard stops in the uh, buoy 10 zone, which is great because last year there were two separate yeah. stops. So yeah. this is, that's a great thing. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. By them uh, doing that, um, it actually uh, bodes better for uh, opportunity and, you know, it's aggregated out. So we're not just, everything's not 
all lumped yeah, together. Yeah, hundred percent. Big mess. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Bill, there, there's yep. always discussion about extensions. Um, I mean, with the run, the way that it's lining up, what do you think the probability is of getting that extension past that first week of April? That's going to be a. That's a really good question right now, especially with it being March 28. Mm-hmm. So we've only got six days, seven days left of real like fishing for spring Chinook, and it's probably going to stay slow. Um, the, the problem is, is that we have a such a low forecast that getting an extension on a low forecasted season is going to be very difficult, but they already set a quota. And once the quota is set, we look at the already uh, creel numbers. And if we can find a way to fish for four days and they can go like crunch numbers, then maybe mm. we can get back on the water. You know how yeah, you know, right. the potential's there. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, good. I mean, yep. as you've alluded to, I mean, slow start and a little dip here. We'll see. I mean, yep. you know, first week of April, end yep. that opportunity that first week of April, this yep. year it's to the 5th. Uh, it's go time. Yep. And if we're going to yep. have success, that's our window of opportunity. Um, to your credit, as you pointed out, conditions are prime. So, uh, don't be afraid Just to grab good. a triangle yep. flasher in your yep. herring and, uh, go catch a springer. That's right. And yeah. it's still good to be out there. Don't get me wrong. Right. Yeah. I'm, and the weather's going to turn this week. It's going to be pretty for. nice. So that's right. That's all right, right. buddy. I well, we never have enough time with you. You always have way too I much know. info to share and we're going to, we're going to do our draw right now and pick our springer winners to jump yeah, out on yeah. the boat with us this next week. Might see you down there uh, Monday or Tuesday. All right, boys. It's really good to talk to you. Always love All right. All right. Have a Bill Monroe day. Jr., Bill Monroe Outdoors. Look him up, Bill Monroe Outdoors, and uh, book a trip with him. Check him out on social media platforms or uh, at his uh, uh, his webpage as well. All right, Tommy, uh, because we knew we'd be crammed for time, I had you reaching the That's old right. head here, pulled out the three tickets uh, at the break, and uh, I wrote them down here. Okay, the three of you are three of you. We advertised four, but we've invited Bill Herzog to join us on Monday, April 1st. Going to be fishing with Josh Carlton, Northwest Drifters Guided Sport Fishing. Northwest Drifters Guided Sport Fishing. That's a mouthful. Uh, Fishing with Josh on the Columbia. We will tell you exactly where and what time to meet and all that through messaging here through the weekend. Um, Looking forward to a great opportunity to get on the water uh, with Josh. So, uh, we're, we're extending the invite to three folks. Yes. We're going to have uh, Jordan there. We're going to be filming, creating content for the show. So you got to be good with, uh, getting on camera and, you know, being part of the show as we uh, create it, uh, April 1st, this is going to be an absolute, uh, disaster, but we're looking forward to it. I'm, yeah. I can't wait. So especially with Herzog on board, you never know what's going to happen. So the three of you that we pulled out of the hat here at the break, Brandon Tap, Chris Ching and Corey Cassander. Is it Cassander uh, Guild? Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, you know him? Yeah, I know him. Oh, yeah. do you really? Yeah, I, I, know I don't know him. Yeah, Never met him. Uh, yeah. I've met Chris Ching once. Uh, Brandon Tapp, Chris Ching, Corey, Cassander Guild. So you three gentlemen are joining us April 1st uh, for some Spring Chinook fishing. More info to come on that through Messenger, and uh, we'll hit you up. Go ahead and message us up tonight. We'll get those conversations started. Jumping out for a quick break, we come back. Uh, part three, the final installment of our Blackmouth Fishing Area 10 with Scott Call and, of course, the Viking, Matt Messing. After the break, right here at Fishing Northwest. A Northwest favorite for almost 40 years, Arima boats are manufactured with pride in Bremerton, Washington. All Arima boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why Arima boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. Arima can offer every boat with Honda outboard packages so that you can take advantage of the reliability and five-year top-to-prop warranty from your Honda outboard. Call or stop by Arima Boats today and let them help you get into your very next boat. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy, nice fish. Beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, geez. Come on. Nice fish. Nice fish.
Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. We were just putting this out, actually. I'm like, boy, I think this thing got bit. On the drop. Like, ah, put it in the rod holder. <laughs> Dwayne goes to put it in the rod holder. It had popped it out of the clip. Like, Took it right well, out of the clip. I guess we got a fish on there. That's pretty funny. Scott wasn't kidding. He actually felt he ah, put it in the rod holder. You literally handed it to me and that fish ripped it out of the clip. Well, I was afraid I was gonna get in trouble by Matt. I know, he's he's yelling put to it in the, the rod holder. The Viking's on point today. We just swapped out to Twisted Sister. Just be skinny. This one's a Twisted Sister skinny. Yeah, just thought, well, let's just try color change. And uh, apparently they like it. It di didn't take long. This might be the biggest fish of the day. So thanks for giving me the rod back, Scott. One of the stronger fish yet, I think. This one's actually peeling a little line here. Jeez. So one of the things we do here is uh, we've been switching up colors. Mountain Rose has been working, and you know we know that color's been working. It got quite a few fish, but how do you know if something else might be working better if you're not trying it? Yeah, we got bit a lot, but you know honestly, this one just right on the right on putting it out, we switched over to the Twisted Sister and got bit right on putting it out. So um, don't be afraid to change things up, and that's why you'll see we have quite a few baits rigged here. We've got three or four, five. Five baits rigged right here, ready to go with tuna. So as soon as we get bit, we bring it in. If it's too short, we unclip that, put a new bait on, and you're right back to it again. So super efficient. Mm -hmm. you have all these rigged and ready to go, you're right back into the game. You got somebody new on the boat, you show them how to use a dual lock. You say, every time I reel this in, I want you to unclip the dual lock. Let's see what we got here. Ah, that's a good fish. That's keeper if it's not wild. It's hatchery. There we go. Little, little bigger fish. Dude, that was an instant takedown on a color change too. I mean, like right now. So, watch that hook. You a player? The hooks are getting in there. Boom. Got bit right away. And Dwayne. Yeah. Got himself. That's probably a 24 inch fish. Throw it on the old deal here just to make sure, but it's got to be. It's the biggest fish all day. It's 24 in the nose. There we go. I like it. It is. That's a nice fish. Nice job, buddy. Yeah, well, credit, credit to you on the lures, man. I mean, so. There you go, Puget Sound Blackmouth. That's why we're out here. Get to go after these until, like we talked about earlier, April 15th, and seems to be enough of them out here, so yeah, right on. All right, threw a little tuna. The original skinny. God, this one of your new colors, buddy. It is. Yeah. Uh huh. It's called Mount Rose. It's done very well. Rose named after. Well, my mother, your grandmother, <laughs> right? So. Pick a rose. But yeah, oh, original Mountain. On that color that's right, original Mountain Dew, and then we frosted the tips with the pink rose. And man, I tell you what, with the glow underneath, should be running these out here. And, to sound because they do work. Columbia River, oh, yeah. to sound, Lower Columbia, Upper Columbia, I mean, it all works, so. Once again, pretty doggone productive morning. From the sluts to the sound in one week. <laughs> Boy, it's been a road trip for <laughs> sure. Weather couldn't have not been better compared to what we had 
started the week down there in Oregon, but this is. <laughs> Scott, I'm so glad you're able to come up and jump on with Matt and I because, you know, a, well, for us at least, a typical morning, Puget Sound, Area 10. I have black mouth in so long. Yeah, yeah, we had you up here last summer for resident coho. Yes. And yeah, okay, so they're not the ocean migratory large chinook that we love to go after, yep. but this black mouth fishery is a lot of fun. Oh, how did they fight? I mean, even for their the, size, the right? Short ones. Yeah, yes. yeah. And so lots of hookups today, handful of 21 inchers, handful of wild fish. Our biggest fish, One of course, are always wild. wild yeah, Matt had a dandy there. So, yeah. but very busy morning, continuous. And to your credit, we fish nothing but your evolution flashers, your cup plugs and your original skinnies. Yeah, yeah, so you were out here, what, a week ago? Mm -hmm. And you're fishing some herring, and I said, hey, let's let's just try yeah. Let's just try this, go yeah. all, and I think we had all one mistake uh, all day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're, we were pinning them, bringing them in, hardly lost the fish. Um, yeah, last week when Matt and I were out here for a better part of the morning, it was uh, spoons, some herring, and we did roll some cut plugs and they all yep. caught fish. Yep. But today it was exclusively all brads. And it just proves to you, I mean, that mountain rose combination out here in Puget Sound, all the way down to 160 feet, and it's it's just whacking and stacking. So that color produced all day, Twisted Sister, uh, morning time with Netzel with the glow. Yeah. You can't go wrong. No, you can't. And the other thing is just our, the flashers with, with the releases, right? Today, yep. I mean, literally we lost one fish and hooked. Mm -hmm. uh, we were double, well into the double digits. For so sure, yep. The releases work, the flashers work, we fish these all day. Um, it was a great day, and uh, yeah, I just can't thank you and Matt enough. Man, well, this was a fantastic day. We've been running your gear up here. You've had years of success in the Columbia on all different fisheries. We've had success. Sockeye, you know, Chinook. Matt and I have been trying to run these up here in Puget Sound, proving the fact to people, and yeah. it's, starting to, it's starting to catch hold. Uh, showing it on the show, showing how to rig in the bait labs, getting you a hider show in the field how to rig. People are starting to catch on and take advantage of these things. And as we were talking on the trip in, you know, fishing bait is great, but with these, uh, you know you're fishing. Plug and play. Right? A short bite. The thing you're going to want to check is your flasher. Did your flasher disengage? You have to bring it up, check the flasher. But if you still, if you think you're still fishing, you know, give it a minute, wait till to see if they come back and. Um, they're just, they're always fishing. Stuff them with the tuna. You know, we got the tuna combination that we mix in there and it just flat out works. So we got to get on the road to home. So uh, gonna bounce out of here, jump out for a quick break and then we'll be back in studio right after this. The Fines Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. The Fines Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. All right, welcome back here in the studio as we wind it down, my friend. Uh, good day of uh, blackmouth fishing, no doubt. Yeah, it's it, yeah, but the end of the season was phenomenal, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's probably why we're closed down. We we got some numbers here that they put out in the uh, press release. So, Marine Area Ten, the winter Chinook fishery reached 145 <laughs> percent of the total encounters of 7,176 fish of an allocation that was given to us of 49. 
153. Right. And the 4953 was the hatchery fish that we were allowed to go after and fish on. And we ended up keeping 7176. So they're saying we caught we caught 145% of our recognized quota or take. We uh, encountered 100% of our sublegal encounters going one fish over yep. in that time frame. And our unmarked encounters, in other words, wild fish that we released, we hit in excess of 125%. 1,189 fish with an allocation of 900 in 53. So we went a little right. over on that. Yeah. You know, and, and this is like the best performance we've seen on this fishery in a while. Correct. And a lot of that is credit to, you know, being allowed to move that to March, yep. right. Instead mm -hmm. of having a January yep. or even a February opener, we didn't go over on our sublegal encounter. That's huge. When you look at the numbers, we were going into the last four days, yeah. right? The mm -hmm. final innings of this fishery. Yep. We were only at 87%. Correct. And then we blew it out of the water <laughs> the last four, four days. days. And if you look at that, how many fish were caught in those last four days, mm -hmm. it averages out to 717 fish a day. Per day on those four days. That's right. We had an extremely high participation rate. Um, the weather wasn't exactly conducive. We had 14 days of opportunity with the four days of fishing, three days off. Mm -hmm. We entered into it on the first two days and hit the hit a Sunday, so then we were closed down for three days. So um, the first couple of days, bumpy weather. The following week, we had a couple of days that weren't real great. So for yep. the days that actually, maybe eight or nine of those 14 days where the weather was conducive, the wind wasn't like yep. a disaster, the fishing was really good. Yeah. Really good. Phenomenal. And uh, I like the fact that what got us off the water is we exceeded, not that we're trying to exceed, but we hit the margins on the retainable hatchery fish. That's right. We yeah. didn't get pushed off the water after eight days of fishing because of sublegal encounters. Which is usually the case. Which is usually the case. Right. So well done, DFW. I think you're uh, you're finding where this fishery needs to be. Had a great time. Uh, enjoyed everybody uh, tuning in here and messaging on the show. Um, look forward to bringing you more content next week. So have a great week. Have a great weekend. Get out there and get something done. We'll see you next time right here, Fish on Northwest.